Annihilation of Caste, Appendices by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Appendix 2. 6. Does the Mahatma practice what he preaches? One does not like to make personal reference in an argument which is general in its application. But when one preaches a decline and holds it as a dogma, there is curiosity to know how far he practices what he preaches. It may be that his failure to practice is due to the ideal being too high to be attainable. It may be that his failure to practice is due to the innate hypocrisy of the man. In any case, he exposes his conduct to examination and I must not be blamed if I asked how far has the Mahatma attempted to realize his ideal in his own case. The Mahatma is a Banya by birth. His ancestors had abandoned trading in favor of ministership, which is a calling of the Brahmins. In his own life, before he became a Mahatma, when occasion came for him to choose his career, he preferred law to scales. On abandoning law, he himself became half saint and half politician. He has never touched trading with which is his ancestral calling. His youngest son, I take one who is a faithful follower of his father, born a Vaishya, has married a Brahmin's daughter and has chosen to serve a newspaper magnet. The Mahatma is not known to have condemned him for not following his ancestral calling. It may be wrong and uncharitable to judge an ideal by its worst specimens, but surely the Mahatma as a specimen is no better, and if he even fails to realize the ideal, then the ideal must be impossible. Quite opposed to the practical instincts of man, students of Carlyle know that he often spoke on practical and subject before he thought about it. I wonder whether such has not been the case with the Mahatma in regard to the subject matter of caste. Otherwise, certain questions which occur to me would not have escaped him. When can a calling be deemed to have become an ancestral calling so as to make it binding on a man? Must man follow his ancestral calling even if it does not suit his capacities, even when it has ceased to be profitable? Must a man live by his ancestral calling even if he finds it to be immoral? If everyone must pursue his ancestral calling, then it must follow that a man must continue to be a pimp because his grandfather was a pimp. And a woman must continue to be a sex worker because her grandmother was a sex worker. Is the Mahatma prepared to accept the logical conclusion of his doctrine? To me, this ideal of following one's ancestral calling is not only an impossible and impracticable idea, but it is also morally an indefensible ideal. The end.